Hey, hey, Waffle Gang, I do hope you're well. My name is Mark, and today we're checking out some more Reddit stories. And if you do love a Reddit story, why not consider hitting that like, subscribe, maybe that notification bell too. And let's crack on with today's first story. And this story is from the Am I the Arsehole here subreddit from Substantial Text 8845 and says, Would I be the arsehole for telling my cousin, his fiance who I had dated before, cheated on me? So, I'm in a strange situation. For background, I used to date my ex-girlfriend Kate about two years ago. Our relationship ended on a sour note when I found out she was cheating on me. She became distant, glued to her phone, and eventually, I caught her sexting another guy under a fake name. When I confronted her and asked her why, she brushed it off with a, since you know, it doesn't matter now, before walking away. It was a pretty shit time of my life. Recently, my cousin Tony announced his engagement to Kate. Although we're not that close, we do keep in touch occasionally. I knew he had a girlfriend, but I had no idea he was dating Kate until their engagement announcement. Tony reached out to me, asking if I could photograph their wedding. It seems that's how Kate connected the dots and realized Tony and I are related. She sent me a text pleading with me to let go of the past and not tell Tony about our history. According to her, revealing the truth would ruin Tony's life. Honestly, I wasn't going to talk about it, but the text felt very strange to me. But I feel very complicated about this. My sister and my girlfriend are saying that Tony deserves to know the truth. They believe it's unfair for him to enter a marriage without knowing Kate's history with me as we are family. I've moved on from the relationship. It's been two years and I don't want to dredge up old drama. Plus, there's the fear of backlash. What if Tony doesn't believe me? What if he blames me for ruining his happiness? Tony is a genuinely kind and caring person and I don't want to hurt him. And there's the rest of the family to consider. My mom and aunt, Tony's mom are extremely close and I don't want to strain their relationship with this. But I also feel, if I were in Tony's shoes, I would want to know. It feels unfair to let him walk into a marriage blindfolded, especially if there's a chance he could be hurt the same way I was. And despite my suspicions about Kate's character, Tony is genuinely in love with her. So would I be the arsehole if I tell him about Kate? Damn, that's such a difficult position to be put into. And I feel like it's one of those ones that no matter what decision you make in this, there's potential for damage, isn't there? You know, if, if you don't say anything down the road, someone could bring up that, oh, didn't you two used to date? And then they're like, why didn't you tell me this before we got married? And you get ran over in that way. And if you do reveal it to Tony, you know, the messenger could be shot. I think Woods replying to her and saying, look, you need to tell him because this could come out one day and, it's, and you need to tell him. I just kind of feel like one day this is all going to come out anyway. Putting myself in Tony's shoes, I would like that information. I would like to know that. To which the CDN says similar. They said, if I were him, I'd definitely want to know, especially since you are family. The fact that she said it would ruin his life is disconcerting. It's more likely that it would ruin her life. Here's a good way out of this for you. But your sister has to agree. Get your sister to tell him as if she's doing it of her own volition. And you don't know anything. Because she's a woman, almost nobody in your family will blame her. She's just being a caring cousin slash big sister for Tony. Plus, she agrees that Tony should know anyway. Either way, he should know before the marriage. Like you said, if he ends up cheated on, once a cheater, always a cheater, you'll feel even worse for not speaking up. Opie says, yeah, this is what we're gonna do. My sister and I have been talking for the past hour and decided to meet with Tony in a couple of days. We're going to tell him and show him the text Kate sent me. The Ghost Reborn says, in quotes, Tony is genuinely kind and a caring person and I don't want to hurt him. And then says, do you not want to hurt him or, or do you not want him to get hurt? Because you can be the cause of some pain for him now and save him a huge amount of pain later. Or you can stand back and let him get hurt on his own. If she had changed, if she was a good person now, she would have already told Tony everything already. She's not save him but op comes in with her update 12 days later and says i made the decision to talk to tony about kate and unfortunately it didn't go as smoothly as i hoped my sister met with tony first and told him about me and kate tony then called me and asked me to meet him when i sat down with tony and explained the situation he told me that he was aware that kate had cheated on her ex before but he didn't know it was with me 
He kept apologizing, saying he did not know. I kept saying that it's not his fault, but he looked so angry during our conversation. Tony confronted Kate, and from what I heard, it wasn't pretty. Apparently, she denied it at first, but eventually confessed, and I don't know what actually happened, but the police was involved. There were no charges from what I know. Since our conversation, Tony has been distant to me. He's not talking to me, and I think he has blocked my number. And I understand that, and I want to give him space. But I feared this happening and feel very guilty about it. And to make matters worse, this leaked to the rest of the family, and my mum and aunt are furious with me for bringing up the past. They believe I acted out of spite and that it was unnecessary to interfere in Tony and Kate's relationship. They've accused me of causing unnecessary drama and jeopardizing family unity. The rest of the family seems conflicted. Some are on my side believing that Tony deserves to know the truth before getting married. Others think I overstepped and that it wasn't my place to intervene. As for Kate, she has apparently reached out to Tony to do couples counseling and Tony seemed open to it. Overall, the situation has caused more harm than good. and I can't help but feel guilty for how things turned out, even though I feel that telling Tony the truth was the right thing to do. I'd like to say I'm shocked by the family's reaction to this, but I'm really not in the end. And I just find it incredibly sad because like I said in the previous part, I think eventually this information is going to come to the surface. I don't think this is something that's going to be hid forever. At a family barbecue, family gathering, something. Everyone will be sat around and then saying, oh, didn't you guys used to date? And then Tony's going to be like, what the fuck? And I think that would have caused even more damage. So the family saying this stuff that, you know, he's jeopardizing family unity is just bullshit in my opinion. But what do you guys make of this situation? Put yourself in OP shoes. How would you have dealt with that? Would you have told Tony straight up? Would you have said no? I'm not having anything to do with that. Let us know your thoughts down in the comments below. And let's move on to another story. And this story comes from creepy wife throwaway from the Am I the Arsehole here subreddit and says, Am I the Arsehole for calling my father's wife a creep? My 32 female father, 60s, has been married to Sasha, fake name, 40s, for almost a decade. I was already an adult when they started seeing each other, so I never had much of a relationship with her. That said, Sasha was nice and thoughtful, though a bit annoying at times, and I never had any problems with her. I now have a husband, 34 male, and two kids, 9 male and 4 female. Sasha is very fond of my children, especially my daughter. That became very suffocating pretty quickly, so we started setting some boundaries. She never overstepped them. In January, my father and Sasha decided to go on a trip to Disney World and invited us to join them. We decided to go celebrate our son's ninth birthday. I quickly regretted coming along. Sasha spent the entire trip fussing over my daughter in ways that overstepped almost every boundary we'd set. Examples include, Sasha bought a mini ears tiara. She wanted me to buy my daughter an identical one so they could match. My daughter didn't like the tiara, so I bought her a Donald Duck hat instead. Sasha got her the tiara anyway and was upset that she didn't want to wear it. My father and Sasha went shopping in between parks. I told them not to buy my kids anything and we still had shopping to do and didn't want to risk making our bags too heavy. Still, Sasha returned with five bags of clothing for my daughter and two for my son, saying she couldn't resist it. My daughter wanted a bell costume to wear at the parks and that's her favorite princess. Sasha tried to convince her to get an aerial costume instead because that's her favorite. I explained that we never watched The Little Mermaid at home because my daughter is scared of Ursula. Sasha insisted on taking dozens of pictures with my daughter in front of the castle at Magic Kingdom. She also took some with my son, but not nearly as many. She tried to convince us to take our daughter to Bibbidi Bobbidi Boutique. <laughs> we refused because the prices are crazy and we'd already bought her the Belle costume. She offered to pay, but we held our ground. I later found out Sasha tried to make a reservation anyway, but there was no availability. When we took our daughter to Slinky Dog Dash, her first roller coaster, Sasha tried to sit next to her. My daughter wanted to sit with me, so we switched. She tried to do the same thing in other attractions. At the Muppets Theater, she tried to get my daughter to sit in her lap. Sasha also tried to pick her up while we met some of the characters. 
there were more instances. The final straw for me, however, was the last park day of the trip. We were at Magic Kingdom. My husband suffered a minor injury and I had to take him to the first aid station. The kids wanted to go to the Peter Pan ride, so my dad and Sasha offered to take them in the meantime. However, according to my father, the line was too long, so instead, Sasha suggested the Little Mermaid ride, assuring my kids Ursula wasn't on it. Actually, there's a pretty big Ursula animatronic there. My daughter was still sobbing and hugging her brother when we reunited. When we flew back home, I told my father that we'd no longer take our children on trips with Sasha due to her behavior. He got extremely angry. He said his wife loved my kids, thought about what they'd like to do at every moment of the trip, and that we should be grateful to have her in our lives. I lost my temper at that. I told him Sasha was a fucking creep and they should be grateful I was still okay with them even seeing my children after her actions during the trip. We ended up having a huge fight after that. It's been weeks since we returned home and my father is still angry at me and my husband. Sasha has texted me a few times. She says she's sorry if she made me uncomfortable, but that she loves my kids and hope to use the trip to spend more time with them. To be honest, I don't think I'm the arsehole here, but I do think I might have overreacted. I believe there's a chance Sasha's actions were motivated by love and she truly did have good intentions. Am I the arsehole? And look, I'm no psychologist, but I suspect there's something more going on with Sasha and her behavior here, but for her to continually overstep boundaries like that is just not right, especially when we got to the, the Little Mermaid ride and she knew this four-year-old was terrified of Ursula but decided to take her on a ride with, of course, you know, come on, my Little Mermaid ride, that she's going to appear at some point on that ride. It's just logical, right? And scare this shit out of this poor kid. There were some people asking questions of OP, so pick a better username says, you're not the asshole because you have your children's best interests at heart but it may benefit you and your dad's relationship to understand why Sasha is like she is. Overstepping boundaries is easier for someone when they believe it's for a good cause or to have fun in a safe way. Does she have kids of her own? Can she not have kids of her own? Does she maybe see the kids as her grandkids? It's a difficult one, but getting to the source of that could make the whole thing healthier. But on the other hand, it's not your job to put that work in when it's your father's relationship. All I'd suggest you do is explain to your father you set boundaries and regardless of intention, Sasha broke them which you do not condone. Good luck. Opie says Sasha doesn't have children of her own. My father has me and my sister and has always been open about not wanting more kids. They're married so I'm assuming she doesn't want kids either. I also don't think she sees my kids as grandchildren. She's always referred to herself as Aunt Sasha instead. When I got pregnant with my son, she commented she was too young to be a grandma. Significant Cat 3 says not the arsehole. You set some pretty clear boundaries that Sasha kept crossing the entire trip. Even your daughter seems to not be particularly receptive towards her. Also, your son can probably pick up on this favoritism and that's not good for him either. I don't mean to do armchair psychology, but this reads like Sasha has always wanted a young daughter and is using yours to live vicariously through. Hence why she kept trying to push things that your daughter doesn't like onto her. Tiara, Little Mermaid ride, etc. Opie says, My son doesn't like Sasha. I'm not sure why, but I think he gets that she favors my daughter. He's also very protective of his sister, so her discomfort could be a reason. Beautiful story says, Not the asshole, but she sounds exhausting. But, but, she also doesn't seem like a truly awful person. So we started setting some boundaries. She never overstepped them. Question. Does she have children of her own? She probably sees your kids as a chance to play mummy if she never had kids. She may not be aware of exactly how intrusive she's being. Looks like there's a 20 year age gap between she and your dad. She probably thought she'd be okay with not having kids. I'm guessing your dad may have told her that he's done having babies, but your little ones, especially your daughter, may have just stirred up those feelings and she's trying to compensate. I still don't think you're the arsehole, but maybe have an honest talk with her. Just you and her and try to show a little grace. My apologies if you've done all that already, and she's still being a pill. OP responds saying, you're right about a lot of things. She doesn't have kids. My dad doesn't want more children. And while she's defined herself as child-free before, she's also told me she's always wondered what having a daughter would be like. My husband and I started setting boundaries because the situation was really bad when my daughter was younger. 
She'd wake her up from her naps when she visited, post pictures of her on social media without our approval, and complain about almost every parenting decision we'd make because it wasn't how she'd do it. So OP comes in with an update and says, Hey everyone, I'm ready to give you an update. I read your comments and came to the following conclusion. As much as Sasha's behavior towards my children angered me and freaked me out, calling her a creep was the wrong reaction to have. That said, I think it's best for my family to distance itself from Sasha for the time being. And at the very least, my previous decision to avoid future trips with her based on the Disney trip is still the best course of action. Sasha's pushiness, tendency to override my and my husband's parenting, and blatant favoritism towards my daughter were much worse when the kids were younger. After my daughter's birth, she began to focus too much attention on her and almost none on my son. I gave more examples of that in the comments on my original post. That's the reason we set boundaries in the first place. The way she fusses over my daughter also bothers me. When we had the boundary conversation with my father and Sasha, she told us that she'd always wondered what having a daughter would be like. She also defined herself as child-free before, so I was never certain what to think of that. Either way, that reassured me and my husband that we're doing the best for our kids. Those boundaries had never overstepped. Then we went on the Disney trip and most of them were completely ignored. Many of you pointed out that she might have gotten carried away or that Disney is exciting and she wanted to make sure my kids has the best experience, etc. There are two things I'll say to that. The first is that whatever Sasha's reasons were, she still overstepped our boundaries. When we first set those, we told her that doing so would have consequences. Disney or not, I don't see a reason to make an exception. Secondly, she wasn't trying to ensure my kids had the best experience. She was still pushing them to fulfill her fantasy of what their Disney trip should look like. She repeatedly ignored my children's wishes in favor of her own, despite them both being very clear about what they wanted and didn't want. Sasha also continually favored my daughter, including during my son's birthday, and fussed over her in ways that made her uncomfortable. And I still haven't forgiven the little mermaid thing. My daughter is still a bit shy and takes a while to open up to most people. So knowing her trust was broken like that angers me in ways I can't describe. To put it in simpler terms, my children aren't props and whoever treats them as such will, at the very least, be put in time out. I called my father and Sasha on Saturday. I apologized for calling Sasha a creep but told them that we needed some time apart. They won't see my family until my younger sister's birthday in late April. If that goes well, they'll be invited to my daughter's fifth birthday party in May. After that, we'll slowly work on re-establishing contact. I also said that if they overstepped our boundaries again, the consequences would be more dire. My father didn't take it well. I don't care. Sasha sent me a text with more apologies, followed by a request to at least FaceTime my kids every now and then. I said no. And to those who said my controlling behavior ruined the trip, my kids had an amazing time at Disney World. They're both still talking about it. My daughter keeps asking us to put her pictures with the characters she met up on the wall, and my son says he had the best birthday ever. I think that's it. Thank you for your advice and support on my first post. And there was a couple of comments which OP replies to. So Canyon says, you protected your children and that's the best thing you can do in any situation. I'm glad they're still talking about the trip. Despite favoritism and the Ursula animatronic, which means you and your husband managed to outshine all of that with wonderful memories. For the possible reconciliation, everyone can act normal for a day, the birthday in late April, especially if they know there's a goalpost on that day. It's the behavior of a time that counts. If they still message you, requesting FaceTime calls and calling you unreasonable despite you clearly saying you want no contact, you could begin a tally. One point for each request, when it's X amount of points, they have their timeout extended because they obviously don't understand boundaries yet. Opie says that's great advice. We don't want to go no contact, but we will if our boundaries are disrespected. Knowing my father, a tally wouldn't be well received. I'm doing my best to avoid turning this into a bigger fight. But that kind of system would probably make things worse. It might be worth a shot though. I'll talk to my husband about it. Scarlett May West says thanks for the update. You're doing the right thing and are prepared if your father and Sasha keep trying to push against your boundaries. Make sure anyone who might take their side is fully aware of the consequences of trying to mediate or help them. Opie says thankfully no one's taken their sides. At most, my sister said I'd been cruel to them. 
A commenter says to OP if she's spoken with her daughter about being uncomfortable with Sasha. OP says thank you for sharing that. It's always been clear that my daughter was uncomfortable with Sasha's behavior, which is why we made so many efforts to reinforce our boundaries. Timid or not, she was very vocal about what she wanted, be it our company, not Sasha's, or specific rides and souvenirs. In spite of that, I know we didn't shelter our daughter from everything. She's only four, so I know the situation was a lot for her to process, and she can't articulate her feelings as well as her brother can. But she's not looking forward to seeing Sasha anytime soon, and I intend to respect that. I just randomly looked on YouTube for the animatronic Ursula that's on one of these rides, and that's fucking terrifying for me. <laughs> Holy moly. Let us know your thoughts down in the comments below. Now, just a huge thank you from the bottom of my heart for getting involved in today's stories. Your love, your support, your time always means the absolute world to me. So thank you so, so much. Truly, you know, I, I know I say it after every single video, but I also know how important time is out of our days so for you to be spending a bit of that with me listen to a couple of stories getting involved in the comments and just sharing your love to one another as well is just absolutely mind-blowing it's incredible please keep being you and i will see you in the next one take care and much love